Hello and welcome here to a new tutorial. So as you can see, I have a face cam. Uh, if you like that or if you don't like that, let me know in the comments. In general, if you have any wishes for some tutorials or for some topics or things I should cover, uh, let me know in the comments as well. So if I can cover that, I'm super happy to do that and do a video about that. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can create in Mari all the supporting maps from a diffuse stream, for example, from a, from a simple diffuse texture, which we have from textures.com. And I think the easiest way to do that is in Mari. So let's jump into it. So we are here in Mari. And as you can see, we have a basic texture, as I've said, is from textures.com. So it's nothing fancy and we tile it here across our mesh two times we can also go for one time it doesn't matter so as we can see here it's going here into the base color and then into our material and to create now all the supporting maps from this texture we start with a scalar what is it view a scalar little dot node here and this is just kind of a little helper for the view here so it's not jumping all the time back and forth here i can show you that and for the next node we go for the luminosity node so what the luminosity node is doing actually it turns our texture here into grayscale so it just takes the luminosity value so it get rid all of the saturation you can also use the saturation node and just go with the slider but if you have a node which is already exactly doing what we want i think it's smarter to use that just for the per for the purpose of performance so and what i mean with this jumping between the view transforms here when we view here this node it's staying here on our srgb display transform so if we would hook it up here to a scalar channel you see it switches and this happens all the time and it's super annoying so to not have that all the time we can simply hook it up here to oh come on we can simply hook it up here to this scalar view node and then we have it so from here on we already have kind of scalar values and if we want we can already feed it here into our roughness channel and view here our material and we have roughness it's not that visible so we can make it a bit more visible by introducing here a levels node and then we can actually grade here our texture a bit stronger and then here here you can see we have now some different roughness values we can check that viewing here our roughness probably here it is blacks they are too black so it's too glossy so we can grade them as we want that's one way you can go but there is also another way which i prefer to go and that's creating a mask out of out of the values we have here in the diffuse map for that we can keep here the levels node and we can introduce here a constant node. Oh, this is one O oh, too much. Constant node here. And what the constant node is doing, we just have here a constant, which is going from zero to one. We go here for something like 0 0.2 and we can duplicate it and go here on this one for something like 0 0.6 probably. And now we want to have the blend normal node. So this is actually from the extension pack. What this node is actually is doing is the exact same what a merge node is doing here. So it's just the blend mode normal. So as we can see here on the normal blend, on the normal merge nodes, we have tons of blend modes. And this one is just that one normal blend mode. And the cool thing about that is it's way better in performance so if you have a project you will come up with quite a few merge nodes and when you are using the dedicated blend mode merge nodes the project will be way lighter and the performance will be way better so your gpu and yourself will will thank you later does that make sense i don't know so let's get rid here of the merge node connect here our two constant nodes uh, come on 
and we want to feed here what we have as a mask here into the merge node. Let's hook this guy here up and we can dial in here now our values. So for example, we want to crunch the map a tiny bit more. So probably something like that. I mean, that's something you have to find out yourself. Maybe tweak it a bit more and depending on the, also on your texture you have and keep in mind this is for demonstration purpose here. So I'm thinking maybe we will not come up with a super accurate material, whatever. So the cool thing about that is now we have here a mask and whatever we feed here into our merge node will be masked by our mask, which is driven by by our diffuse stream. And that's so handy. For example, we can go here in and make the constant now with more glossy. So as we can see, we have full control over these values here. Can also have a look here on the material. So it's probably on the wrong side that the rust is now getting glossy. We can simply do here an invert for that. And now it should be the other way around. Yes, looks way better. So we can go in here and change that and create here our mask a bit more probably so that's that's something you can you can spend a lot of time on it's really based on your scene this is how you can do the roughness map as as i showed to you you can use directly the output of the luminosity node and create it a bit with a levels node and feed it here into the roughness channel or the a bit more smart way a bit more flexible way use it as a mask and that's also how we create the metallic map of it so we have here already let's make a bit more space here we have here already the black what means hey we have no metallic here let's bring in here a white constant and we can actually duplicate here this maps and we can have quickly a look here in our texture I think we don't want to use this one, so we can just create a new one. We can go here for our levels. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is change it here to clamp because it's, it's mask data and we don't want to have our mask going on values below zero or above one. So you really want to make sure that this is here on clamp, otherwise it will maybe go with crazy values and we don't want to have crazy values, right? All right, hook this up here to um, these levels. View that quickly. And we want to have here the bit brighter parts as metal. So here as well, go for the clamp. And then let's crunch the hell out of that. I mean, you have to be a bit careful, otherwise you will lose kind of the transition areas. It's, as I said, it's, it's, it's a bit of a try and error thing and it's really depending on your texture. I say that so often. <laughs> All right, let's bring that here into our merge node here for the metallic. And uh, fingers crossed, it looks cool. Let's view the, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's about right. I think it's about right. As I said, it will not create here the most physical accurate results. I mean, you can actually, to pretty accurate res um, results with that. That's what I do, for example, all the time at work and in, in my works all the time. So it's not that it's not physical accurate or so. It's just, yeah, to, to get the values right and everything. It just takes a bit of time and a bit of fiddling around and I don't want to bother you here too long with, with this boring stuff. So for the bump map, actually, we can go for a gray constant, what means we have zero elevation or zero cavities. We can use two ways. Way number one is we go the mask route again. And oh, that was wrong. And we can copy paste it here into that. And then we can decide, hey, do we want to push out the things or do we want to push them inwards? In this case, we can push it outwards. And then we can use here for sake to keep it easy here our roughness mask stream this is of course way too strong so we can go here onto our merge node and so cool we have here 
the opacity slider and then we can just bring them to a point where we are a bit more happy with the result. That's one way you can go. Or another way is you can use the blend overlay merge node here. As I said, this is just a stripped down version of a merge node, just that we have the overlay blend mode here. Let's get rid of that, bring that here into our stream. And we just want to have the luminosity here, bring it to our overlay and probably we want to grade it a bit more towards a mid gray. For that we actually can view it here quickly, bring the opacity down 100%. So this is what a mid gray looks like, so no elevation, no pushing inwards, nothing. And when we bring in here our texture, we see it's way too dark. So for that, we can actually brighten it up a bit more towards the mid grade. It's just an approximation. And from here, we can view our material again and change here the opacity to something more reasonable. I think something like that is not looking too bad. Looks pretty cool. Probably we could do here that a bit different in values probably this is it's a bit rougher here and this is probably a bit more glossy so this is how you can can fine tune your materials and what is so cool about that is you can have here a full stream of a diffuse of a diffuse chain and utilize that to create your supporting maps. There's just one thing that is important to keep in mind is if you if you have here a whole chain behind and you change there some color values, this will affect here what is what is downstream as well. So you have to be a bit careful with that and decide a bit on what stream you branch out to create of that specific part your supporting maps. I mean, you can go here then later with another merge node and go with a second layer of it. But yeah, what, what is super cool about it is, is, is based on this texture. And if we change this texture, everything will follow. Oh uh, yeah, even if you're doing it wrong, it will follow. So as we can see, this is, this is pretty cool and it's very flexible. So you can change the, the texture here and it will follow as well. Probably you have to retweak a bit the masks, but yeah, I think you got the idea. This is super handy and you can actually get a lot of data out of such textures here and create stunning cool looking images when you render them with your textures you painted, of course. So yeah guys, this is what I wanted to show you and as I've said again, if you have any wishes for tutorial topics, let me know in the comments. If I can do it, I'm happy to do that. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy to see me on, on the face cam. And yeah, happy rendering guys. See you then. Bye bye.